And now your host, Richard Thomas. Good evening, and welcome to It's a Miracle. Tonight's show is proof that miracles can happen anywhere, from large urban centers to remote rural areas. It doesn't matter where you are when it's your turn to be touched by a miracle. You could, for instance, be enjoying a day of fishing along a quiet stream, completely unaware that you're about to be visited by angels. It was an unusually hot May afternoon in Decatur, Illinois, and nothing Les West could say would dissuade his two nephews from accompanying him to their favorite fishing hole. It's way too hot and the fish won't probably be biting anyways. But I said, the boys want to go. Just basically have a good old time on a Sunday and uh, come back home and have our own fish story to tell everybody. Which we did have a fish story to tell, but and it wasn't the kind that I wanted to tell. Nine-year-old Ryan Curl was watching out for his five-year-old brother Chad that day. Your line is like under his line and can't bring it up. I wish that Chad could catch something because usually he didn't catch anything. He didn't have good luck with fishing. Give him a little bit uh, more tension in the line. But Chad's luck was about to run out in a much more terrifying way. Nothing's biting. And the boys was getting bored. And so we were talking about ending our fishing trip. And we were about ready to go home. The water looked pretty good. So I said, let's just dangle our feet in for about five minutes. And Chad, at this age, he adored his big brother. Whatever big brother did, he wanted to be like big brother. At that same moment, across the river, two fishermen, Don Engel and his brother-in-law, Brian, were launching their boat. I could see two small children and a man on the bank they weren't really interested in fishing. They looked like they were having a good time. We were late and we just wanted to get down to where our favorite fishing hole was and just get to it. Ryan turned to climb up the bank. Be careful. And a moment later, disaster struck. Chad, Chad, he's in the water! The first thing I could think of was to jump in and we'd swim together, which was my major mistake. At the moment, wasn't sure whether or not he had actually had slipped in or he had jumped in. Actually, in the beginning, we thought maybe they were swimming down in the water. But Chad could not swim. Grab my head! And we started seeing that it's turning into a very serious situation. The boy, he's struggling with the man in the water. Chad was starting to get hysterical. He was pushing me under, and I couldn't breathe. I was panicking at that point, too. I was losing control. We were both going to go under. The swift undertow began pulling them both down. Chad was trying to keep his head up and trying to move towards the embankment, but he couldn't because he's not a very good swimmer. After several minutes of this, he finally went down for the last time and he didn't come back up. It was just like watching a horror movie. Coming up, the desperate search for five-year-old Chad Curl's body. I really didn't think we would find him. It's a real brown water, and there's nothing to see. I was real apprehensive. I'm thinking that he might be dead already. While enjoying an afternoon at a local fishing hole, Five-year-old Chad Curl suddenly slipped into the creek and moments later disappeared underwater as two fishermen nearby watched in horror. No matter how fast this boat was going to go, it was not going to get there in time for me to go in and recover him before he went underwater. Chad's uncle Les was also struggling to stay above water as nine-year-old Ryan Curl watched helplessly from shore. I was just under the water line, enough that I could see Ryan and barely hear him. And he said, Chad, go get help! Go! Quick, hurry! Miraculously, Ralph Fortner and his family were taking a detour down Baltimore Road that day. Hey, look! That's Ryan on my baseball team. What's wrong, Ryan? What's the matter? My brother fell in the creek. While Les slowly worked his way to shore, Ralph reluctantly went into the water to look for Chad. 
I didn't want to go in. I was real apprehensive. I'm thinking that he might be dead already. I saw a man jump in the water. And he didn't know where to look for him. Hey, he's over here, the north side. That's the church here in the middle of the bridge. And he finally moved over to the area where I had last saw him go down. I really didn't think we would find him. It's a real brown water, and there's nothing to see. Time was running out. Without oxygen, brain damage can occur in less than five minutes. And then I held my breath as long as I can, and then I was feeling around. He had that light gray kind of purple color. He was lifeless. He was limp. He was unresponsive when he was pulled out. It was one of the hardest things I ever saw. I've dealt with a lot of death and job-related injuries, and uh, a small child like this, this, this was just real traumatic for me. Anybody know CPR? I do. The newest arrival to the scene, Sherry French, was also the only one present who had taken a course in CPR. I don't consciously remember how to do CPR, but I think that when you start something like that, it's almost as though you're not in control and I didn't feel like I was in control. I felt as though I was watching myself try so hard to make this child live, and I didn't think I could. <laughs> Somebody asked me if they could help me, and I was so very thankful because I thought he knew CPR. I don't know CPR. Oh, well, just pinch his nose and blow when I tell you to blow. Okay. So I did the compressions, and I yelled, blow, and he did. and. Uh, tried for a pulse again, and I still couldn't find a pulse. I was scared that he wasn't going to make it. I thought he was just going to die. It didn't look good. He was laying there. He was unresponsive. One, two, three, four, five, they worked on him for quite a while, and then finally he spit up some water. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, I was thinking the chances were pretty slim that he would not have any brain damage or any permanent injury of some kind. As I was walking away, I started crying. There was no life to him when they took him away. Now, I don't know, it was hopeful thinking. I thought I saw some color in his toes. And if it was in his toes, then maybe it was in his brain. And that's what I was really praying for, that maybe it had done some good. Chad's parents, Diane and Doug Curl, were contacted and rushed to St. Mary's Hospital to be by his side. Uh, we're still playing a waiting game. It's hard to say what's going to happen or where this is going to go. They said because he was about five minutes under the water, that could create you know, brain damage there. Our hearts just dropped. It was very hard. I don't know how to tell you how I was feeling. It's, I was scared. 16 hours later, Chad had improved enough to have his nasal gastric tube removed. His parents now could only hope for the best. Hey, Chad, how you doing? You got the tube by your mouth, now you can talk, can't you? Yeah. Well, I love you too, bud. That was his first word I really heard, and that couldn't have been any better. I love you too. That was the moment right there. Miraculously, Chad had a complete recovery. Right now, you couldn't tell the difference between before and after. There's no side effects or brain damage or anything. Les West is very grateful that his nephew was given a second chance. I'm a highlight of his life. He's a highlight of my life. He's very excited to come see Uncle Les and ready to go out and do whatever we have planned for that day. And I really want to go fishing again, except one thing. I don't want to go fishing where I was, because there's a too strong of an undercurrent. Recently, Chad and his family had a reunion with the angels who saved his life, and everyone there was struck by the incredible circumstances that brought them together. 
First, Ralph Fortner had no business being on the road that day. I'm only on Baltimore Road because my wife griped at me because we had to get something to eat. That was the quickest way to get to the store. Otherwise, I'm at home. I'm home sitting on my couch. <laughs> Instead, Ralph was bravely diving to find Chad's body, but he would never have found it if Don Engel hadn't been there to point the way. I believe the good Lord put us all there at the right time, at the right place. Anybody know CPR? I do. And one of the people put there was Sherry French, the only person who'd stopped to help who knew CPR. We were only instruments. And we were so thankful, each of us, that we had that little bit of knowledge that we needed to do it. Every person that was there contributed. I don't think that we would have came out with the outcome that we had if any one of them were not there. All that makes it a miracle.